Let's start off by talking about my man here, Sean Pickett. All right. It's not uncommon. We see situations where, you know, they t defendants say self-serving things to the police, okay? We actually just saw it in the Redlick case. She had three or, three or four different stories. The jury still believed her when she took the stand. I don't know if that's going to happen here. But how big of a problem is it that he told these other stories to police? Well, I, just like in the red light trial, it's huge. It's a huge problem. And I think that we didn't get turned around. And I bet if some jurors were asked about uh, the previous trial we watched, that they would say until she testified, um, they were probably not turned around. Uh, a lot of it will be on what kind of evidence the defendant puts forth. You know, the reasonings for the false statements. Some of them were, you know, pointing the finger at the mom's um, boyfriend. Um, you know, another saying that voices in his head made him do it. I mean, these are like, you know, very different versions of facts that, you know, are being presented. And now we're coming up with a third version now um, that my mom was, you know, brutally killing my dog. And I walked in on her and then she turned towards me. Um, she's a very small woman. I can't tell from the way the defendant is seated, but he looks like he's a small man too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I could see that if, done properly this defense could work but it's you know it all depends on what kind of evidence they put on at trial as you know